Welcome and thank you for checking out our How to Invest in Hamilton video. This resource is dedicated to providing you with additional information about Hamilton, along with some effective strategies around investing in Hamilton. As you may already know, Hamilton has been forecasted as one of the best cities in Canada to invest in for well over a decade, primarily based on underlying driving economic factors such as increasing average income, decreasing employment, positive net migration, declining interest rates, and the effects of transportation, and most recently, what we call the ripple effect. Now, when it comes to employment in Hamilton, the largest employers are Hamilton Health Sciences, McMaster University, the City of Hamilton, and the Hamilton Wentworth District School Board. And these are all government-backed, well-paying, secure jobs. Located in the most densely populated corridor for economic activity in the country, Hamilton is right in the heart of the Golden Horseshoe. The Golden Horseshoe is home to roughly 9 million Canadians today and forecasted to grow to almost 14 million Canadians by the year 2041. And this region is experiencing what is known as the Manhattan Effect with Lake Ontario to the east and the world's largest greenbelt to the north and west. And further restricted by development due to the Niagara Escarpment, which is a global biosphere. Essentially, we're running out of land to build on in this region. And as a result, Hamilton is gearing up for at least a 50% intensification between 2021 and the year 2051, which requires over 110 thousand new housing units to meet this goal. Of those 110,000 new units, over 3,000 of them are forecasted to be accessory dwelling units. Hamilton has also recently experienced a shift in population growth, whereby the largest demographic segment is millennials. This huge cohort of individuals is looking to purchase and rent homes, which is a great opportunity as landlords. The city of Hamilton is currently home to 580,000 people and it's expected to grow by over an additional 236,000 people by the year 2051. That's almost an increase of 50%. Under the GO Strategic 2020 plan, the GO by Metrolinx, amongst a number of other initiatives, is planning on converting trains from diesel to electric, which will have a significant decrease on commute times along with increasing the frequency of traffic and additional stops through the Hamilton into Niagara Corridor. Most recently, effects of COVID on housing has really fueled what is referred to as the ripple effect. Hamilton has for a long time been known as a bedroom community for commuters into Toronto. But as a result of more virtual workplaces, many homeowners and tenants are leaving the city and residing in larger properties with more land. As a result of these moving economic forces, they are forecasting an additional 122,000 jobs into Hamilton over this time frame. For those of you savvy investors that are looking for some of the fundamental statistics and metrics, get your pens ready. The current average home price in Hamilton is $1,011,290, which is up by a whopping 45% versus last year on a year-over-year -year basis. Now compare that to a historical appreciation. If you were to take a look at a 60-year average, Hamilton has seen price appreciation around the 11% per year. Now when it comes to vacancy rates and average rental rates, a one-bedroom vacancy is 3.4% and rents for $1,673. A two-bedroom vacancy rate is hovering around 3.2%, and rents for $2,056 per month. And a three bedroom vacancy rate is 5.7% and rents for $2,564. One of the most common questions that I'm asked almost daily is how's the market? And whether you realize or not, when you ask this question to an analytical realtor, what you're asking essentially is, are we in a buyer's market? Are we in a balanced market? Or are we in a seller's market? The market intelligence tool to determine the strength of the market, or what is also referred to as the absorption rate, is what is referred to as months of inventory. A seller's market is defined as zero to four months of inventory. 
A balanced market is defined as four to six months of inventory, and a buyer's market is greater than six months of inventory. Now, right now in Hamilton, we're currently sitting at 0.7 months of inventory, which is defined as an extremely strong seller's market. As an investor, all of these metrics are really important to help identify effective short-term or long-term, as well as negotiation strategies and tactics. Some of the most effective investment strategies that we see in Hamilton include long-term buy or hold, or a flip to yourself because of this realized and ongoing forecasted price appreciation. Now, I'd like to introduce you to one of our sales partners, Shauna Conley. Shauna is one of our investment specialists and she's very active in the field. She really knows her stuff. Shauna is going to share with you a recent success story of how one of our clients effectively used the strategies to grow their portfolio and build generational wealth. Hey everybody, it's Shauna here from the Heddle Group. I'm going to share a recent client success story that investor clients of ours have just purchased. So we're going to talk a bit about the strategy we were trying to go for, um, what we ended up with, and how we navigated the hot Hamilton market all at the same time. So for these investor clients, we knew that we wanted something turnkey that was completely ready to rent. Uh, these investors were not local, so they did not want to handle the stress that comes with managing a renovation. We actually originally started our search in a different neighborhood, but when we saw 47 Purvis come up, we knew it was the right fit. It checked all of our search criteria. The property itself was fully vacant, which is really important because it allows the landlord to set their own rents, making sure that the rents are the most up-to-date rents you can possibly get, and it allows them to screen their own tenants to make sure they're getting somebody really qualified in the home. So we ran the numbers at forecasted rents at the time, and we were actually able to get the actual utility bills from the current owner to really fine tune our expense details. With that said, in competition, we were able to secure this property for $851,000, but even paying over asking price, the financial outlook looks really, really positive. So I'm gonna walk you through what that looks like. So the unit mix in this home is one three bedroom unit and one four bedroom unit. And because the property was fully vacant, and initially we forecasted the rents, however when the time came to actually rent the units, these landlords were able to get rents hundreds of dollars more than we originally predicted. So they got rents of $2,000 a month and $2,300 a month. The beauty of what they did as well is they separated the utilities 50-50 for each unit. We'll talk a bit about this in a second. So their total rental income you see on your screen here is $4,300 combined. There is no other income on this property, but for example, if you had coin-operated laundry or a detached garage bringing in income, this is where you would put it. We always take off our vacancy rate of 3%, which leaves us with gross income of just over $4,000 a month. So now we need to take a look at our expenses. So I mentioned earlier that the landlords split the utilities 50-50. This is a unique setup because there was still only one hydro meter, one gas meter, and one water meter. But because the unit sizes were very similar to each other, they were able to put the utilities on the tenants. So every time a bill comes in, they essentially invoice the tenants for 50% of the use. These clients in particular were managing the property themselves, um, leaving their monthly operating expenses of $689 a month. We now need to look at our mortgage payment. So we know our income, we know our expenses, but we still have to pay the mortgage. So forecasting the financials with a traditional 20% down payment at a 2.5% interest rate over 30 years, that gives us roughly a mortgage payment of about $26.85 a month. So what does this mean for cash flow? Well, we know our income of just over $4,000, we know our expenses of $689, and our mortgage of $26.85, this leaves us with positive monthly cash flow of $796 a month. Now, if we want to calculate our ROI or return on investment, we first need to look at how much cash we invested into this property. So we call this our acquisition costs. So this comprises of our down payment, any initial improvements, our home inspection and appraisal fee, land transfer tax and legal fees, 
This gives us a combined $186,495. This is how much cash we put into the purchase. Now, if we want to put this into the four ways to win format, we're going to break this down into the four components. We're going to start with cash flow. So based on our total cash invested and the cash flow we're getting every month, cash flow is responsible for just over 5% of our total ROI. Our principal recapture, which is how much your mortgage principal gets paid down every month, represents about 8.29% of our total ROI. We then have passive appreciation or market appreciation. So we ran the numbers at a very conservative 5% market appreciation. With, um, with those conservative numbers, our ROI, or sorry, our component of the total ROI is 22.8%. You notice here there is zero forced appreciation. This is simply because the property was already turnkey. There really was no appreciation to force. This leaves us with a total year one ROI of just over 36%. So if these financials look attractive to you and you're eager to learn more about how you can secure property of this nature, um, and please, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to sign up for our deal of the week and our free Hamilton Investors Report simply by clicking the registration link in our booth. Looking forward to chatting with you and helping you achieve your real estate goals.